Hi, Mr. Jankovic, welcome on show. Hello, good day, pleasure to be here Thank with you. Thank you so much, thanks for attending us. Of course, we're just curious about the numbers, first of all. I'm going to ask you about the numbers. Are we in full recovery after pandemic? What can we say? If you look at all of Europe's airports, we are not yet fully recovered. Uh, the latest data we have that covered January to July, mm -hmm. passenger traffic at Europe's airport was still 25% below pre-pandemic levels, the levels of 2019. But I think it's important in that context to also stress that Turkish airline, Turkish airports are overperforming, uh, you know, all of Europe's airport minus 25, Turkish airports minus 18. But I think what we've seen is that in the summer, uh, there's been tremendous demand for air transport. And if you look just at the July figures, they are better than the composite January uh, July. Uh, in, in July, we were at minus 14% compared to 2019 for all of Europe's airports and minus 6% for Turkish airports. So we're getting closer to the levels of the pre-pandemic, which is very good. So you have mentioned about Turkish airports, so I'm just curious about it, of course. So uh, what can you say about it? Well, I think the fact that Turkish airports are outperforming the rest of the European airport network mm -hmm. is done uh, primarily to the fact that uh, Turkey had a very cautious uh, health safety approach. You had limited lockdowns, much less travel restrictions than many other European countries did. And that, of course, uh, facilitated the continuation of air travel and that benefited very much both Turkish airports, Turkish airlines, their employees, and the economy of the country. So what are the expectations for next year, let's say? I think there's a lot of uncertainty now, of course, because we have uh, much increased geopolitical tensions in Europe mm -hmm. due to the war uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and we have tremendous inflationary pressures uh, that are going to impact uh, consumer uh, uh, behavior. Uh, and that are likely to impact the level of demand for air transport in the winter. Uh, so uh, despite the uncertainty for now, we are forecasting that uh, still the traffic figures will continue to improve next year. Next year, we, we think we will be 10% below uh, 2019 pre-pandemic level and that we will reach the full recovery of passenger volumes the following year in 2024. But again, Turkish airports will be doing better. I think they're very close to uh, the levels of 2019 and next year they will probably be above the level of 2019. So, of course, uh, we have energy crisis in Europe and uh, that's, I mean, uh, becoming a real problem for the aviation industry also because of the high cost exactly. in fuel and the other kind of uh, things. So how the industry is coping with that? Well, I think if you look at airports, uh, clearly uh, this is impacting our cost base because 45% of the operating cost of airports relate to staff mm -hmm. and energy consumption and we are seeing tremendous pressure on, on the cost of these uh, upward pressure on the cost of, of those things. Uh, but down the line it will also impact the ability of airports to invest because we know that inflation uh, also in, impacts the cost of materials and it will impact of course uh, the cost of construction and development of airports. Uh, so this is of course a, a worrying situation also because uh, the economic situation, financial situation of Europe's airports after two years of COVID is not still at its best. Yeah. So also consumer behaviors uh, changed, at least for businesses. Yes. And so... Yes, we okay. see, I think what is interesting and quite remarkable is that most of the recovery in passenger traffic that we have seen so far mm -hmm. is mainly driven by leisure demand and what we call visit friends and relatives demand. And, and business traffic, corporate traffic is still trailing behind. It's not recovering as fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, this is, in a way, this, this gap is, is a worry in the recovery moving forward, especially if there's inflation, because uh, we know consumers are gonna be hit hard by inflation and again, that might constrain their ability to keep traveling. 
So also many industries are now trying to adopt net zero carbon emission strategies and the aviation sector also as well. So what are they doing right now? I mean, what are the targets? What's the main problem? Well, we have, we have very ambitious targets uh, as the aviation sector, uh, airlines, airports, uh, air navigation service providers, and also manufacturers of aviation equipment. We have collectively committed to reach net zero carbon emission by 2050. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's a major challenge because especially for aircraft emissions, we don't have yet uh, zero emission aircraft technology. This will come over time through electric powered and hydrogen powered aircraft. But the deployment of those aircraft on a, on a massive scale is not for tomorrow. This is for you know, 2040, 2050, 2060. So in the meantime, what is important is that uh, uh, airlines uh, develop um, uh, what we call sustainable aviation fuels, mm -hmm. alternative fuels uh, that allow to reduce the CO2 emission. That's the best avenue for the years to come to reduce the CO2 impact of, of aviation. And also, there are a lot of, I mean, supports from governments. So in Europe, for example, can you just explain us a little bit yes. more? Um, in the EU, uh, we, we get now a very uh, clear policy framework and regulatory framework developed uh, to actually mandate the uptake by airlines of sustainable aviation fuels from 2025. Uh, there's also market-based measures that are being developed uh, to actually push the aviation industry to decarbonize. Uh, and I think this is something that actually Turkey needs to look at very carefully uh, because I think it will be very important for Turkey to develop domestic production facilities of sustainable, sustainable aviation fuel so that you don't rely on, uh, on external supplies. Okay, so, uh, I mean, in your forecast on the website, uh, it's seen that the air traffic will be going, uh, I mean, just increasing day by day. Yes. So, it, how about the investments? Yes, it's... it's Are they going to catch up? That's, that's uh, for airports especially, uh, that's a big question mark, because as I mentioned, uh, airports have been financially battered by the pandemic. We made record losses, 20 billion euro of losses for European airports over the past two years. Uh, we got much less support from governments than airlines. In the EU, for example, airlines got 38 billion euro of financial support. Airports got less than 5 billion. So the result is that airports had no choice than to grow their debt. And uh, the debt of Europe's airports have increased by 6 billion euro. We will have to repay that debt, mm -hmm. um, and that is going to take a big part of our future revenues, which means that our ability to invest in the future in capacity, in digitalization, in the decarbonization is now at risk. So that's a big worry for us. So do you think consumer behaviors, I mean, we are just told about it, uh, consumer behaviors change? So maybe they're going to change the plans later on. Do you think that for investment um, strategy? I think, I think long term uh, growth will be there mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, people want to meet face to face. We have fantastic technological development today, but it's remarkable that this summer we had this surge in demand for air transport. So nothing can really replace human contact face to face mm -hmm. and people want to discover the world which is a very positive thing for for i think humanity uh, but having said that uh, yes i think there's, there's going to be a lot of pressure moving forward on the sector to improve its environmental performance and again decarbonization will be key on the corporate side i think clearly we're, we're one of the reasons that uh, business travel is coming back slower than uh, private or leisure travel is the fact that a lot of companies today are setting uh, uh, net zero carbon targets and that reducing corporate travel, air travel, is part of meeting these targets. So that's why it's very important that we decarbonize the sector 
as, as quickly as we can. So how do you see the developments in Turkey? I think Turkey is a fantastic aviation market. Um, you still have a lower propensity to fly across the population compared to the rest of Europe. Mm -hmm. So it means it's a market where there is uh, still significant growth opportunities and more growth opportunities certainly than in the rest of Europe. It's a market that is not yet mature in terms of aviation demand. I think it's very important that the government keeps supporting the aviation sector. I think the track record of Turkey in terms of airport development is excellent and it's something that needs to be recognized. I think there are a few issues for us that needs to be fixed a little bit. I think the government should be much more liberal in, in opening the market to foreign airlines and in particular low-cost carriers because those carriers today are unavoidable in developing connectivity. And I think there is space for everybody. You know, network carriers like Turkish Airlines are crucial. They are the pillar of the country's connectivity. But that can go hand to hand with, uh, you know, uh, opening up also to low-cost carriers who cater to a different demand and play a key role in developing and complementing the connectivity that other carriers are, are, are offering. So I think that is going to be a very important moving forward for Turkish airports. And I think also uh, coming back to what I said about decarbonization, um, I think the Turkish government um, should develop a clear strategy for decarbonizing the sector and in particular for the deployment, the production in the country and, and deployment of sustainable aviation fuels. Okay. So, uh, also some European countries just uh, faces labor problems. We didn't talk about it yet. So yes. Well, it was, the summer was very good in terms of volumes, but for some airports, it's been quite difficult operationally because some airports um, in some countries in Europe and some major airports like London Heathrow, Amsterdam Schiphol and Frankfurt faced acute staff shortage. And I'm talking here about staff for security check at airports and also all the grand handling staff. And that's the result of the, the pandemic. Um, I think uh, the, those airports in particular these are airports that didn't get a lot of financial support from the state, so they had no other option than to lay off people. And because unemployment is very low now in Western Europe in particular, uh, labor markets are very tight. In this recovery, they have really faced a lot of problems to attract those people back to working at the airport. Okay, so we just talked about energy crisis, the Russian war, but also uh, we have restrictions in China. Yes. So how it's uh, affecting the market? Yeah, this is, this is one of the key reasons why we are still below uh, pre-pandemic traffic volumes, uh, passenger mm -hmm. traffic volumes, uh, uh, is the fact that a big part and the most important part in terms of volume of Asia with China is closed. Uh, I think this is, this is really uh, preventing the market to recover more quickly and we hope of course that uh, uh, China will, will be more amenable to lifting travel restrictions in, in the near future. I think we just got a very good example of Japan which just yesterday announced that it was finally lifting all travel restrictions and welcoming tourists again. Uh, we, just, we just pray, inshallah, as you say in <laughs> Turkish, we just pray for, uh, for China to, to follow a similar path. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you so much for your comments. Do you want to add anything else? No, my pleasure, Gosde, as ever. It's a, it's a pleasure to be in Turkey. Thank you for, for having me. Thank you. It's a pleasure for us as well. Thanks so much for attending us.